Just want to show you my shaving horse. Uh, in issue 9, I wrote about this shaving horse uh, and how I made it out of pieces that I had around, random sizes of random thicknesses. Um, I really wanted a shaving horse for a long time. The one I used to have kind of fell apart in the woods. Um, but I also wanted to have this nice dumb head style, this continental style. And so this is from a, a branch from a red pine tree uh, on my property. And so you can see this curve here, this is continuous grain running here. Um, so I harvested this branch and was able to use it and you know, only, I think it was maybe three or four days, I started building this, this shaving horse with it. Um, so it had some seepage, you know, but it wasn't too big of a deal. Um, but this shaving horse is, uh, I'll, I just want to show you some of the features that I like about it, why I chose this style. Uh, the first thing is that it's a continental style, this dumb head style. So instead of having the bar across, like the bodger style, um, what I like about this is for longer stock, you can access all sides. You're not locked in with the bar. So I like that. Um, holds it down nice and firm with just a quick push of your foot. Uh, nothing, no surprise there, but what's really important, I think, for a shaving horse is that you see the pin here, the wooden pin is offset. So when I let off the, the treadle off of my foot here, it opens back up. And shaving horses are really efficient. They're very efficient because you can do all your work this way, flip it. And you can see if I had to clamp that, that would be, it would be taking way too much time. So being able to have that self-releasing feature, I think is really important for a shaving horse uh, if you want to be efficient. So um, those are some of the features uh, of it. You can see how quick pulling this up this way can be. Look at this way. So I like to be able to rough out. This is a spoon blank or you know anything else. Any green wood is really efficient, but you can even use dry wood too. Um, there is one other feature here if you want to come around and see. Right around in this side, there's a little bit of a V-notch here. Right in the mouth, there's a V-notch. And that's great because I can then grab this stock. So if I were to start rounding this, I can start pinching it that way. And I can work on the edge and pull all that, that airs down. And bring it in this way. Bring it and it, so once I make a square stock, you can start making an octagon. So that's a really uh, handy feature to throw in there. A friend of mine did that for me, uh, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, I have a piece of leather here just for grip. Um, I haven't messed with it since the day I put it on. It's not something you have to keep scuffing all the time. Um, but if you had just wood, it could start to burnish and slip. Um, so the cool thing about the shaving horse is there's this, this circle of force, this continual. So as I push down, and I'm pulling up on the draw knife, I'm pushing harder on my feet, and it's continually supplying the force down. So you can hold it very gently by just in gently setting your foot, or you can push really hard. The other little secret that isn't as obvious to people, I'll show you this. See how these legs are protruding up through the seat? That's great, because it catches right there on your jean pockets, <laughs> and that'll hold you back. So little tiny things like that uh, are, you can push really hard then and you can pull these big chunks like that. Or you can do light work. So uh, that's pretty much the overview of my shaving horse. I like that it opens and I like that it catches my jeans and holds me in place. Uh, and it's a simple, simple design. All these shaving horses are different. So there is no perfect design, I don't think. Um, but those are the features that I like. Hope that was helpful. Uh, take care.